Excellent. So rather than going in full presentation mode, I'd like to, you to see what's coming up next. So we leave this in, this, uh, in the side so you can travel down uh, and, and see what's, what's upcoming. And so we're gonna walk through a couple things uh, today. And uh, yeah, we're excited to stage three. Several of you have been uh, with us from stage one on. And uh, so that's, uh, that's exciting. We're thankful for your attention and hopefully things, this is helping you uh, work through. We've never really experienced anything like this um, in a couple of lifetimes, I think like for the lodging world. So um, yeah, we're excited to walk through that with you. I think the main thing though, that we, that we, as we were talking through and planning through this is that now that we're, so stage one was really about like this time specifically stage two and stage three are totally valuable in what we're doing right now but they're also like long-term um best marketing practices in or outside of obviously we're gonna be looking at specific things inside of a uh, pandemic world but best marketing practices mm -hmm. anytime mm -hmm. so um that's what really that's what, how it's kind of different in what we're looking at today than what we've looked at previously. That's right. Yeah. And so we'll get into this, but stage three, we're not in this stage yet. We've not hit strong demand. I know you can all feel it in your uh, businesses still. So, uh, so we're kind of thinking about planning for the future and like put in the email, there's value, even if things change, there's value in that preparation time. Mm -hmm. uh, even if the plan doesn't uh, stay the exact same. And we know that with this COVID stuff and governments mm -hmm. deciding lots of different things that the plan is probably not going to stay the same. So hopefully we can give you, everything is built from a foundation of how do you build a uh, lodging marketing uh, plan that is sustainable for the long term. And so that's kind of what we've been building. So we'll get more into that uh, here today. So uh, let's talk about if you don't know who we are, Red Oak Local, we work with local businesses of all shapes and sizes uh, on their digital marketing. We especially love working with lodging properties. It's, it was our exclusive specialty for a number of years. And uh, we still, that is the, uh, a large bulk of our business because um, that's, that's where we've chosen to invest our time. We enjoy that. Uh, we love our insurance clients. I don't, I don't, I don't love <laughs> the insurance industry. We love serving uh, lodging properties for a number of reasons. So, and then been... this is Matt, and I'm Leah. Yes, he does. He usually says Red Oak Local <laughs> and not our names. That's, That's okay, right. though. So yeah, we're married, of course. We have uh, a couple of other team members. Uh, I, uh, I direct a lot of the the different uh, pieces, and Leah is director of our content. So anything that is the written word which there's a lot that we produce. Uh, she's in charge of that and gets our, our small team uh, uh, working in that direction. So we've been doing this for uh, a while now, since 2010, heavily with lodging since 2014. We work with a lot of different types of properties, uh, big and small, uh, and uh, lots of different, different types of folks. This is uh, a little bit about what we do. We have a handful of services that we provide to clients and we always are trying to whittle that down to what clearly benefits them in the short term and what clearly benefits them in the long term. There's a lot of good things out there that you can do. I, social media comes to mind. Uh, that's not, there's value in you as the owner, uh, as a property doing that. We weren't able, the years that we did it, we were not able to come away and say, hey, we, we specifically added value to our clients in that. So we, we interact with social media in specific ways, but not just in, hey, let's get on there and let's post. Uh, the value of that has diminished over time. And so we feel like we can add direct, specific direct bookings to, to our clients in, in these specific ways. And we'll talk more about this, but just this is our, our background and what we do. We don't do uh, photography, we don't do print, we don't do design, we do digital marketing and those that we can tie directly back to results. So we'll talk a little bit more uh, about that. Okay, so what to expect today, as with the other sessions, uh, this is gonna be education focused. 
Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about taking the next step because information is great, but bringing it together into a strategy is really what uh, uh, progress and what getting real momentum is all about. Uh, but it's going to be practical, action oriented. We're going to try to focus on examples as much as poss possible to show you visually. Uh, you can get, there's a lot in the industry that will walk you through and take you down a path of a lot of good information, but our when rubber meets the road, this isn't rocket science. It's, uh, there's specific things you need to do and it's generally visual. So we try to give examples. Uh, you're not gonna see a lot of fanciness. Hopefully we really stay focused on what matters. And like I said, we're focused on stage three today. We have on-demand webinars uh, for our previous stages and we'll drop that in the chat and uh, <clears throat> email that out with this replay. Everything goes on there. You can access it later and use it as a resource for uh, for your business. Would and you for, the, for the stages, in case anyone who ha you've seen the marketing playbook, that's probably how you got here. So we're literally just following that along, but pulling out specific pieces and going in depth on those. So our agenda today is that we're going to be talking about developing specials and packages. Um, we're going to be talking about getting found on Google local search. Um, also expanding and using your online reputation. This is one of our favorite things to talk about and um, our lodging growth pyramid or the lodging growth pyramid where mm -hmm. how how all of this comes together to build what you're trying to build so that's what we're going to be talking about today you will notice time markers on those those are just as much as for us as for anybody else here <laughs> um we love this we love uh talking through this and we love talking to you um but we also really want to respect your time so we are going to um really work to watch the clock on some of those but please do not hesitate to put your questions down below we will get to them at the end of each section and then at the end of the webinar. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, this all emanates, as we said, from our playbook. We, the webinars, we can only go in depth on certain things. We, every time make a list of like five, six things and we keep cutting down because we wanna show so much. So go back there for like the big picture plan. This is going in depth and this is gonna continue to be uh, an ongoing uh, resource, like I said. So, like I said, stage three, stage one was kind of crisis level. You know, we went through that in March and April, and some of you are still kind of in that where there's no demand for your properties. Stage two is where trickle demand comes in, and we're starting to see, I'm starting to see that with clients in the south, especially where they're opening up uh, a little quicker and uh and really starting to see people doing some traveling they're trying to be safe and trying to really uh focus on that but that's where we're seeing a lot more uh activity those in the north you know if you're near new york at all you're probably uh, a lot more careful we're in michigan pennsylvania ohio they're all you know so it just depends where you're at uh and you're located but stage two is trickle demand you're starting to see some some movement and you're starting to get some long uh awaited for bookings and then stage three is that strong demand we're starting to return to something of a normal will we hit last year's numbers in 2020 in terms of you know occupancy and revenue uh, very unlikely very unlikely but you do have summer and fall and those are prime times you know to to have this opportunity to do that so uh so we're hopeful and we're hoping to give you that foundation to build up and maximize that because there's I there's a lot that you can do even in the midst of of this so that's stage three okay before we, we're going to reference this we want to just mention this we've talked about it before your two most important customer groups are one your past guests your best future guests are your past guests we talked about that with the promotion booster triangle and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that today. The second group is those that your past guests influence. We're gonna talk about more about that today, especially in, around your reputation. And it's not just about getting reviews on TripAdvisor, uh, it's about a lot more uh, there. So, uh, and I would say stay, you know, the, the la that last customer group is people that are targeted, they're really interested in staying in your area. And we'll talk about that a little bit today, but I see so many people taking maybe a, a less brazen approach, but a very similar approach to the cable company. They get you in on that deal, they get you in the door, their focus is on getting those new people. And then once you're a customer, you become, <laughs> they find ways to take more and more of your money. And that is not how to build a long-term 
business, they only get away with that because in a lot of cases they're a monopoly in the area, you know? And so even if it's not that brazen, a lot of businesses operate on that premise and uh, refocusing on how do you delight your past guests and so that they come back, how can you talk to them? They're not just going to automatically come back in most cases. And then how do you get them to influence your future guests and, and go from there? Um, so any other thing to say about that? No, I think so. so we'll, yeah, we'll reference that. Just an encouragement. Just continue to think about and focus on ways to reach those uh, two groups of people and utilize those assets. That's, that's going to bring you through. And you delight them enough and they're going to be working for you. For, yeah. yeah, they're just because they're, they're not going to be able to help it. So why, totally use that to your advantage. So that's one of, um, specifically for step number one here, where we're developing specials and packages, we're talking to our past guests most often in this portion. Um, this is our email list that we've built. Um, when your guests have reservations, you're gathering their email addresses. This is if you have a way to gather email addresses on your website for a newsletter, people who are looking to travel to the area, um, you have a travel guide, but you're gathering those email addresses and you're staying in contact with them regularly. We talked about this a ton in stage two, so I'm not going to hammer on this, even though I could. I'm gonna be talking about what the stages look mm -hmm. like. Thank you. It's not fine though. Okay, so just a reminder, the promo booster triangle is you have a strong offer at the top. That could be a promotion, that could be a package, that could be something that you do all the time, but that's what we're gonna be talking about. It goes out via email, it goes out via email more than once, and it gets um, targeted in social media ads that are working in conjunction with your email list and with that offer. So everything goes together um, and kicks them back to you over and over again. That's just a quick review. So we have um, lots of offer types. We were actually compiling this list earlier today, trying to go through different things. At the end of the day, what you are looking for as an uh, independent lodging is that you want to build packages that have these two parts. You wanna have an offer type and an offer structure. So um, I'm going to use Judy and Jerry because I'm a little familiar with their area. Um, I know y'all you have the grape festival in the summer sometime. I've been to it, that's about all I can tell you about it. It's in the summer sometime. Geneva, yeah. It's in Geneva, yeah. And um, that would be a local, um, area special event and then you could create a package discount or add-on that goes with that like hey we will have a fresh grape pie in your room when you check in okay just as a quick example um, if you have a local festival that's a great thing to do um, you could have if your property has experiences if you have a chef on staff and they teach a cooking class you can add a cooking class onto a stay that would be an add-on with the um, property experience type. Um, life events like anniversaries and birthdays are easy to put add-ons or packages around. These are the things that you probably do already um, for those life events. And then we're gonna be looking at last minute deals. Um, the reality is, is that sometimes um, you're busy, what is usually your busiest time does not become your busiest time. And so you want to say out, especially to your, your previous guests, hey, we have these, this availability and because you stayed with us before and this is going to be um, a quick and easier yes for you, we're going to give you this deal that's a short-term deal, not diluting the brand, but like, hey, we just have an emptier weekend and we're surprised about it. We're going to pass that on to you because we'd rather have people here than not. So we're going to be looking at those type of things. Um, so we're, the reason why like there's a process to this and it's a little bit of a take one from column A and one from column B is because copying and pasting one deal from one end to another end doesn't usually work perfectly because there's too many factors. Um, if somebody in the Smoky Mountains says, hey, you have to stay three nights during peak foliage season because Tennessee has a really long peak foliage season. Vermont has a very long foliage season. Northeast Ohio is not known for its peak foliage, but it has really nice foliage. So you might not be able to take that special exactly, but you can do something similar in that season. Um, so what you want to do is you want to take something from column A and something from column B, and you want to promote that. You want to fulfill it. And then you want to track and see how well it's doing with your previous guests. And then you might need to make little tweaks. Okay, next fall, instead of saying you have to stay three nights with us, we're going to say you have to stay two nights with us. And we'll add the same add-on. Um, to that. Um, you're here for this specific event, um, say a big lobster festival or a big, like I said, the grape festival. 
um, we're going to add on this, this thing that's in town. Oh, wow. People really love that. We're going to do that again next year. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this, we didn't put it on the slide here, but you know, there's, there's principles that carry over, but you have to kind of experiment and go through this process to figure out exactly what works for you. Um, like, like Leah said, and some of those principles are encouraging people to stay multiple nights. You make a lot more money as people stay multiple nights. You know that you have less uh, housekeeping. They're already there. There's a lot of uh, benefits to that. So encouraging towards that, encouraging, um, encouraging uh, multiple night stays, midweek stays. There's things that carry over that are kind of the fundamentals but finding the right mix, depending on your property, why are people coming, what's your geographic area, um, that that can be um, uh, something that, that can really change. Can I um, pop back up here just to answer Paul's question? I was gonna pop up there to answer okay. Paul's question, but you can, go ahead. So Paul, great question uh, on no festivals, large events. Those are <laughs> basically canceled for the rest of the year. and. That is absolutely true. You can see on this offer type, local area special events is one of those options. That's gonna be pretty much done. It's just pretty much not an, not an option or it's gonna, there's gonna be some much smaller events as well. So there are smaller events that I think you're gonna see popping up over you know, towards the fall time, uh, but it's not gonna be a huge one. But I would say uh, focus on other areas. Life events is always, in season. Anniversaries, birthdays, baby moons, there's always something coming up that you can focus on in life events. Uh, you can always focus on specific travelers. So maybe a couple, you can have a couple's package, a romantic getaway package. It's not necessarily specifically tied to an anniversary. They may use it that way, but you're tying it into couples as well. So those are always happening seasonal. Uh, Vermont, beautiful fall foli foliage, have a package, have a special around those types of things. So you're, yeah, you're just gonna have to shift to more um, intimate experiences, local experiences, wine tours, guided tours. There's folks in your area that you can build uh, packages around. So, um, and, so yeah. And yes, this is obviously for getting, for when things are, but we're talking about when things are more returning to normal. And stage three is looking at, um, not just pandemic new normal, but like marketing into the future. So mm -hmm. that's why we're listing all of these. It may not be relevant today, but it, this is stuff that you want to be thinking about as you're building packages. And that's why there's lots of different types to match up with different structures. And if you have this on your website and it's ready, when people start booking, it's just done. It's no one loves putting together uh, packages and specials. There's so many different factors to, fig to figure out. But if you do it now, then you can, you can profit from it uh, once things come back. Um, and I'm hoping and thinking in different areas is obviously going to matter. You know, July on, we're going to start to see a, a steady climb, sure. hopefully. Okay, so we want to make it really easy to book these things. You want to use your booking engine to make these pop up. Um, this is an example of someone where when you click a specific room, you can add the different types of reservation based on what you want. And then before the next page is this next thing right here, which is you can add these packages right on. Um, they're seeing, they're in front of their face throughout the whole booking process. So it makes them really easy to say yes to as they're going along. Cause they're not going and having to go back to the specials page. Remember what it's called. They're not having to keep that in mind. It's right there as they're already booking. So you want to make that super, super easy. Um, one example I gave was an add on package. This is one of our, this is very similar to the, the slide above what they were doing in their um, checkout process, but these are specific examples. So stay three or more nights and we'll upgrade you or we'll add on this um, think for two people. We assume you're coming for a romantic getaway. We're going to make it even more romantic. We're going to add dinner, picnic basket, and champagne. That's an, an easy add-on. You're already staying three nights. They're, and they're already booking a three-night stay, which like Matt said before, is saying, hey, we're th that's a great stay. The more nights they're there, the, the better for everybody, really. Um, and then the ultimate escape, the perfect package to enhance a romantic getaway. This is a similar package, but even more to say, okay, we're so we're so glad that we're here. We're going to get you to eat here and drink here and stay here and all of those things. Um, so that's an add-on package saying, hey, after you stay this many nights, we'll add on these things with your package. Show what the value is. They both say what, the, what that would cost if they pieced it out individually. 
and then what it would cost to add on when they're adding it on at their reservation. Um, gift cards got special. We run this every year for our customers at um, Christmas time for all of our in clients. We run this at Christmas time. We have a, I talked about it um, in stage two specifically that there it's um, four to five emails. It's a social media um, boosted post. And then it's the, there's a percentage bonus. We are running that again with our clients during um, the pandemic. And it's really working really, really well. Um, but it's not something we can get out there once. This is something we're getting out again and again. But usually you're doing this one, maybe two times a year. Yeah. Um, because you don't, you don't want people to wait until just the bonus mm -hmm. to use it. And you don't have to do it with a bonus. Uh, we, oh, sure. li we like that. Uh, it gets people over the edge mm -hmm. and it gives you uh, some cash flow at times when it's pretty, pretty tough. You know, middle of winter is pretty tough for most properties unless you're in the South, in the deep South, really. So, um, so yeah, running this, we'll talk more about some of the, the results, you know, from, from running something like this and what you can get. Yeah. Um, I also like the bonus because I feel like it, when people are already in a gift buying season, it makes it really easy to say yes to, oh, we were going to get mom and dad a gift card to go someplace anyways. This makes it even better um, to do that. A last minute special, like I said before, um, you maybe had a group cancel or it is a normally high season for you, um, but you have one room booked instead of all of your rooms booked. Send this out to your most loyal past guests, the ones who are, it's gonna be so easy for them to say yes to. Give, the, give a, a percentage off or add an add-on to staying and get them to come this weekend. Fill up those rooms. Um, this, is, this can be done super, super well. Hey, past guests, we, we would love to see you again and here's a great opportunity. Um, obviously no one wants to do this too much. It looks like, um, that can look like, uh, like planning's not going well or something else, but doing this every once in a while is a really good way to be like, oh man, I, we were just there for our anniversary, but we want to go back. Like that sounds awesome. If you can dial this in, this can be a huge boost in, uh, revenue at t different times that you need it. We've, used it for clients for a number of years and one's really started getting addicted to mm, uh, yeah. the, the boost and they wanted to run it every couple of weekends and it totally diminished the value. Uh, we were able to, they had a 20 room in and we were able to fill it up on the early, you know, when we first started using it and as they want, really wanted to increase the frequency, it really got harder. So spacing it every other month mm -hmm. uh, that people aren't going to, to, to remember. You can go less frequent than that, but, uh, but that is a great way. And group cancellations, wedding cancellations, uh, just a slow, you know, you can just give them a reason. Hey, it's the last uh, weekend in August. People are going back to school. You know, that's, that's typically a slow, uh, slow little lull. Um, you know, hey, come on, enjoy the inn. It's beautiful still. Last year's summer lasted beyond Labor Day. Um, which was nice because that's when we had our vacation booked, but that's not typically when people had their vacations booked. So say, Hey, look, the weather ended up staying great. It's a great time to get away. It's great to have in your back pocket, this mm -hmm. kind of thing, and you can do it without giving away the farm or mm -hmm. reducing anytime you discount, you want to do it for a limited period of time and um, just very specific. So people don't lose the value of of your property in their mind. And I think that's why we like this going out just to the email list because um, I know that we're talking about the promo triangle, but we like this going out just the email list because those are people who are, who are not going to then wait around for this to happen the next time. They're going to say, oh, I, I love this and this is awesome and it gave us an extra opportunity to go. Um, and then the local experience offer. Paul pointed out that this is probably not going to be much of a thing this year. I do not disagree with you, but this is something to keep in mind as we continue to grow forward. Our main in clients are near um, the coastal Maine botanical gardens where they do it like 650,000 Christmas light display and it's enormous but a lot of hotels are in Maine are seasonal because of how cold it is in the winter time so some of the ones that are open are now some of the ones that typically close are now staying open until this is over and some of them um, are offering specials to go with it and one that they did is they actually partnered with the Maine gardens to get entrance tickets available um, that could be used and they change you know 
all kinds of things, but they made it so that their guests could go in at any time during this event, which was a big deal this year. Um, what event is nearby you where tickets are maybe going to be a part of their travel expenses anyways? As a business to business, can you, are, is there a, a discounted ticket available for you? Um, maybe this is just a local attraction and maybe it's not an event um, where like the entrance fee, you can say, hey, this is part of the package and you're gonna get entrance to this thing that you're gonna probably want to go to anyways. And now you're getting that as part of this package we've put together. Um, it includes, um, you know, maybe we'll send a picnic out with you to go do this event or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, things that you already offer, packaging them together with that ticket um, can really add to that local experience offer to get people excited about the things that are going on in your area or to get their attention when they're already looking at that thing in your area. Mm -hmm. So um, I wasn't probably quite 10 minutes, but I worked my best. <laughs> so you can, you can go now. I just want to say this, you've, you probably have specials, you've done packages. I would encourage you usually uh, when I talk with innkeepers, when I talk with lodging owners, uh, there's a couple things that stand out. One is they hate fulfilling some of these things because as they get more complex and they have to manage that. Uh, so obviously keeping it simple can be good, but the, the thing to understand about specials is it's not that people will um, necessarily always book this, but it gives you in your marketing something very clear to talk about mm. and lead as you lead a horse to water, you're leading them in helping create a vision for their getaway. And people really appreciate that. Um, we, you know, you'll see a bump in other areas because they're looking at your properties, meaning if you promote a Mother's Day thing, they may come for Mother's Day. They may specifically say, oh, wow, this is great. It gets them to the site. It gets them, um, in the broadest sense, humans love events and not just like gather together events. They love things that break up the monotony of typical life. And this is a great way to help them dream and help them dream about doing that. So it stands out and allows them to do that. So there's benefit, even if sometimes it can be a pain to fulfill it. Um, and the other side is when I talk to folks, generally you do not have enough of these happening. There should be a good healthy mix. And it's not, there's not one right number, but I would say if you can have between five and 10 of these around based around life events or seasonal or, you know, things that pop up last minute, you're going to capture a lot more business than just saying, come and book. It just, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, benefit. So having more and, and seeing the, the full benefit I see is, is really key because, uh, and hopefully this gives you some creative ideas on how to build specials around that instead of just, uh, you know, it's easy to get in ruts because these, these can be um, a challenge to put out. Jerry asked a really good question. Do you put out a regular email or does it have to look like a brochure, brochure style ad? So I, these are all screenshots from promotion triangles that I have run and put together. So um, the gift card one, um, I'll use this. This is the email copy. Nope, I'm sorry. This is this the special copy on the website that we, we send them to. This is the email copy and this is the Facebook copy. So um, we talk about it in natural ways. Obviously we're sending out more than one email. So one email is gonna be like the, hey, this is why we have this special and we wanna make sure it's great. And then one is, if it's a time sensitive one, one's gonna be this long that says, hey, don't, if you wanted to do this, don't miss out on your chance to do it. Um, but there's all kinds of different emails that we do along those ways. Um, a lot of people, and we talked about this, the, they worry about the content of the email, but not so much the content of the special. Um, and that's why, again, this is the special content right here, uh, like what is written on the specials page. We're, what we're doing is we're crafting that image in their head of what their getaway could look like. So don't, that we don't want to stop just shy of, of, of nailing it. Why would they want to come here for this? Why? So many folks I see like technical details, you know, it's like stay, exclusions get this fly. amount. And then there's a big list of exclusions. Mm -hmm. Like you're still, um, you're, you're trying to continue that vision. You can have some exclusions. I would argue against having a really long list, but if have, you confuse, you lose. Make yeah, it as simple as possible. The clarity of uh, your offer, but also the vision of like, what they can experience and they can do. So that's where we tend to go a little bit longer because people will read if it's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to directly answer, I would almost never do a brochure style type ad. People 
want to connect with the story and you can use photos, but I would, especially on a phone, when you're looking at it, you're going to, it needs to be pretty simple and pretty much one column kind of ex experience. Stage two, we talked about crafting that exceptional story. You're in and your guest experience is your guest being the hero and you being the, um, the Rick Steves to their travel experience and making them the hero. Continue, that story is crafted in every piece of content that you put out. Um, I know that that sounds exhausting if you are not a content creator, but think about what your guest is going to see. And even if you do that, you, your writing is shorter because of that. Um, great. As long as you're still crafting towards exceptional guest experience. Mm -hmm. So now I know I've gone over 10 minutes. <laughs> I hope to get there. I know. <laughs> okay. <have> five now. <laughs> I am gonna keep this uh, quick. This is something we wanna highlight and this is getting found on Google local search. Uh, this is something that you probably messed around with, but uh, it really uh, merits having a really uh, strong focus on this. And this falls outside of those two main groups of your past guests or your best future guests and those that they influence. This is people that are traveling to the area. You need to reach out to them and you can do that in all sorts of ways. This is, so important to have this dialed in and 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 whatnot so um one of the things that you know when i talk to folks a lot of times they're like okay i get google's important but don't, i have a website up there it's, it's good but if you think about the fact that as i used to i messed up and use an adjective with us but google it that's a verb. We don't say, think about it. We don't say search it. We say Google it. And so that- Our kids who are little say Google it. Mom, can you Google that for me? Like ask a question. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Well, could you Google it? That's so ingrained in our culture for better, for worse. But that it's, it's so, um, like I said, it's so ingrained that we utilize that um, almost just out of reflex at this point. And so making sure that we're strong in a multiple areas and there's multiple ways to show up for Google is really, uh, really key. Okay, I'm gonna show you. So just to kind of illustrate that point, uh, I didn't have time to really simplify this. So I just pulled some screenshots and I wanna walk you through this. So we do, uh, with clients and different programs, we do uh, a lot of conversion tracking. So we're tracking the source of their online bookings. They're tracking the source of their phone calls and where they're coming from to understand what is the return on their investment in different, uh, in different uh, programs that, that we're investing in. And so this is the result. This is for a client last August and uh, I'll kind of walk you through that. So first is their call tracking totals. So for the month of uh, August, they had, uh, and it doesn't show the number here, I wasn't able to capture that, but this is 139 calls and you can see the ratio between these. So out of their calls, uh, their website produced uh, this many, um, some other sources uh, did not, this, this wasn't running at the time. And then you can see, GMB, that stands for Google My Business, that's Google Local, that's what we're talking about. So the vast majority of their phone calls during a, a busy season of the year came from Google Local. And then this is their same period, this is their online bookings. Their online bookings for the month. Uh, this is not people that called them, this is just people that booked online. We called them as up here. Uh, so the online bookings was about $36,000 uh, during that month. 111 transactions. Uh, the source of that was is shown in two places um, because of how we had to do their tracking. And that is GMB stands for Google My Business. That was $13,000 in revenue. And then Google My Business was another almost three grand in revenue. So out of that 36, for, you know, thir roughly 40%, almost 40%. And I'm just showing the top four. Yeah. Um, Google, that would be their website search traffic. Um, that produced, that's a separate thing. So just to give you an idea of, you may have bigger numbers than this, you may have smaller. Um, I see this consistently across clients that Google is producing, especially Google Local produces a very good chunk of their direct bookings. So it, it merits uh, really investing in this, in this strategy um, in, in that way. So I'm gonna walk you through, I think it's helpful to kind of see 
you know, where this affects and what the, what matters here. So this is a, an example. Uh, if, I, if someone were to search for hotels in Rockport, Maine, you're going to get a mix of different businesses, but right here is what the Google hotel finder. And this, uh, they ch changed this up in November, 2018 and have been messing with it. It's a little different than other local businesses, um, but they've got built in. They're trying to become and take over, you know, all the OTAs. And there's uh, a lot of downsides to doing that, but it's great for direct bookings for uh, you, the property that you just can't get with other OTAs. Um, and so um, anyway, so this is a client I wanna talk about. And so hotels, Rockport, Maine, little town in Maine, and you can see, this is what's showing up. You can see reviews, you can see different um, attributes of the property. And here's websites that show up underneath this. Typically there's more ads at the top that will show up because, but right now that's a little less lessened. So you can see um, there's a lot of, you know, huge worldwide companies, hotels.com, TripAdvisor, Kayak, Visit Maine, uh, is a more regional site, Expedia. They're all competing there and they have to buy ads. This is the sandbox for actual local businesses to, uh, to compete and sh show up and it's very visual. So this is where most of bookings um, that aren't from older guests uh, or from past guests are coming from is from Google. Uh, and so, um, so, just to, so if someone's searching, they're gonna be drawn towards this. When they click in, because I want to come back to this, I want to show you. When they click in, they're going to see a lot of information. I would say you, you've got to give this as much, in some cases, more care um, than your website itself, because this is the first impression people are going to get. It's not on your website. That's where they go to dive in even further. Um, in a lot of cases, it's here. Photos, they can see reviews. They can see different attributes based upon your reviews and your profile. Uh, they can, of course, check availability and whatnot. And their Google hotel ads, you can show up in this spot uh, at, for direct bookings. But a lot of people will just go ahead and click on your website or we'll give you, um, we'll click on this and, and dial um, your phone number. Yeah, I was gonna say the book room, I think. So does it? Yeah, it goes down, doesn't it? Book room pushes, yeah, yeah to a prices tab. Um, so there's, there's a case, a strong case for showing up here as well that we want to talk about, but a lot of people are going to click over to your website and that's where you can get that direct booking, um, even if you're not playing in the Google Hotel Ads sandbox. So there's a lot here. There's a lot of tabs um, that you can get into. And, uh, and so, so I want to sh share with you uh, three uh, things that you can do. We have a whole program around this that is really in depth, but there's a lot of things that, that you can do um, to, to really uh, show up. So let me jump over here. Okay. So this is, uh, this is another client. So I want to walk you through, yeah, like I said, three tips you can, you can jump in and you can complete uh, this week even. The first is categories. Uh, I see a lot of folks have a very basic category um, listed. So if you're coming to your Google My Business and you should, uh, if you haven't, Obviously you need to claim or create your listing. Most of you I'm guessing have these and have had these. This is where your reviews are stored and whatnot. Um, so I'm kind of skipping ahead. If you have any problems with that or questions, uh, so put them into the chat. But categories, if you click here, come into the info tab and you look here, you can see that you have the choice of a primary category and then you have the choice of additional categories as well. And there are a lot of uh, potential categories depending and um, that you can get into. If they were pet friendly, you could have put pen friendly accommodation, group accommodation, and there might be even family reunion. Not for that, but you can get really creative in how you talk about yourself. Um, you can go overboard. You could add in as well. Uh, you could add resort, you could add hotel. You want to be creative um, by adding these things, but not going overboard. So you, we keep it to a handful. Um, but most folks I see, they have a primary category, maybe one additional. Finding those things, especially if you're a writing venue or a restaurant, 
you do offer group accommodation, um, those types of things. That is the nuance that is going to give you the benefit because if someone's searching hotels, there's a lot of options, but as they drill down, they're, they're going to see this and this is going to help you uh, show up in those, in those areas. So that's the categories. You can add those depending on your, on your um, business, business type and make sure you add, you get in there and really play with that because uh, that can really help you show up in a lot more searches. Okay, the second thing is hotel attributes. Um, this uh, is a really key thing Google added about August of last year and um, they had a very simplified version expanded it out. Actually, this was one of my small uh, moments of fame where I was uh, one of the first people to report on this new, this new addition and interface. Um, I got, I got some, some free got, some, got some free, yeah, free t-shirts, <laughs> free press for it. But this is a big deal because this is another way that Google's trying to play as an OTA, which uh, there's other bigger questions there, but for you, it helps you get nuanced into exactly the uniqueness of what you do. So if you come here into your profile and you scroll down, you can click on hotel attributes and it kind of takes you in this whole another area where you can hit property details, talk about children and your pools, wellness, business, pets, that you can, you can add. And then you can come over to room details and fill that out. So filling that out with a lot of care and a lot of detail will help to drive um, when people are doing searches. Based upon indoor pool and spa, uh, the people are seeing that kind of stuff. Um, though that's, those attributes are influencing what shows up there. If I type in pet friendly, you can see those attributes change. That's because we've taken the time to really uh, select those. So doing that will help you show up even for some of these lesser popular uh, searches. And then once you get into it, you can see that they're shown as top rated, a great pool, spa, free parking, great location. A lot of the attributes you select and the reviews that talk about your service are pulling, are, are pulling into these areas and this is gonna make uh, a big difference in how you can be found. So you can see pet friendly. This is another way people can select budget options near the Camden Snow Bowl, all of those things that will show up to based upon different searches. So that's how those attributes are used and they're used in multiple ways. And so filling that out um, is, is uh, an hour or two that's well worth your time um, and there. The last thing that I'll talk about is photos. I mentioned when you come and hit, look at all these photos, uh, you need to be updating your photos uh, on Google. Anything that's on your website should be here. They need to be great photos, but Google will also show your guest photos if you don't have a lot. And they're not always the best photos of your property. They're usually not. You know, so you want to really front load that so people have the best experience because they can come here to photos and search through different types, search from sources of you or your visitors in different formats. Sometimes um, we don't have video for them, but you can sort through video uh, videos as well if you have that. So you've got all these options where they can get a really clear idea of who you are, what it looks like and make a decision. Um, on whether they're gonna proceed to the next step with you. Of course, they're gonna look at reviews as well. We're gonna talk about that in the next thing, but add your photos, add your best photos and add them regularly. That's another engagement uh, thing that Google looks for um, to, to decide who's, who's gonna show up in, in more searches. If you have uh, great photos, it really helps. So, okay. So we talked about that, kind of ran through that quickly. I want to give that practical. There's a whole world. There's people that all they do is spend their time dedicated to Google Local. And um, we spend a lot of our time doing, even though we do other things, that's, that's a big chunk of our, our time because the, the benefits are so great. So uh, we're going to press on. If you have questions about this module, uh, let me know and we'll uh, talk about that. Um, I can answer your questions there. Okay, number three, I wanna talk about expanding and using your online reputation. So we've, Leah said we ordered this so we could talk a little bit shorter. I see we're-, we're Not nailing through. it. <laughs> no. Uh, we but, just wanna make sure this has so much value when we do this. And right. so it's hard to cut it down. So 
thanks for hanging with us while we provide. Thank you. What so we'll try to be snappy and, and valuable with this, but um, the re your reputation is, as you know, really important, but I see a lot of folks, there's a breakdown, even with hotels and bed and breakfast where you are well familiar with the value of TripAdvisor reviews, but there's a whole nother world to expand and use, especially in a post COVID world. So the, the, to, we're trying to find a way to get to the heart of what reviews and feedback does for your business. And I think the idea is um, it makes everything go smoother. It helps everything slide easier. You can have mediocre reviews and you're doing online advertising, you have a great website and things just, they're just okay. You have great reviews and maybe not even the, the top of the line website and things just fly easier. It really is uh, the conduit through which, um, it, you know, just makes things a lot uh, to flow a lot easier because it's like a restaurant that people see, you know, people are usually on the, on their phones these days, but you think of um, a restaurant, you go past and you're like, where should we eat? You're going to pick the one with the full parking lot probably because you know that there's other people that like it. So um, that's what we're trying to encourage. And it's, when he says great reviews, he does not mean a slew of five-star reviews is the only way to make this work. What, what we're going to be talking about throughout this is that we want a full image, a full look at what people are experiencing on your property. Mm -hmm. If left to their own devices, the people who will comment and leave reviews are people who had a bad experience or a medium experience. And people that had a good experience may mark the stars, but they probably won't say anything specific. But if we ask them and we ask for their response, you're going to get more well-rounded responses that give a customer's traveler's view of your property and of what you're doing really, really well and of what maybe needs to be improved. And people are gonna see how you respond to those, both in your words and in your actions. And they're gonna get a fuller picture of what the experience is like at your end. So it's not just getting a ton of five-star reviews. That's great and we love that, of course. Mm -hmm. But that's not what this is just about. This is about the full um, viewpoint of the traveler experience with I think you. this is one where the devil is in the details, where mm -hmm. it's not just about the stars, it's about the people sharing about their experience. And so just to kind of give you guys an idea uh, so this is from Cool Runnings. We enjoy this movie. It's a good uh, classic movie and just a difference. Let's see if you guys can, can see this. So this is the early on when they're training. <laughs> in and Jamaica. In Jamaica, no snow. They're training for bobsled. And uh, if you haven't seen this, it's, it's a pretty good It was movie. on Netflix. I don't know if it still is or not. <laughs> the snow what we're i think what we're trying to get yes. at is that the snow is what makes it go they have wheels on their sled but that's not the same experience the snow and ice is what makes it go and reviews are the snow and ice and that's what's going to make it go that's right you don't want to have to push a vw bottle uh beetle with john candy sitting in it i'm just i love john candy no one wants to push a beetle with john candy sitting in it so that's right so everything flows easier so it's hard it can be hard to uh really get to the heart of like, or not get to the heart, but see the direct benefit sometimes in reviews, but it's just impacting everything else. Uh, we had kind of two things uh, come to mind or two, two stories. One is uh, a client that um, is in a more urban environment and uh, they, they've had great reviews. Uh, we've been working with them for five years to manage their online reputation. And that we've seen that time and time again, really affecting uh, the quality of the guest, people coming back and all of that. But last summer they had uh, experience, to, they're in the South, so typically things slow down in the summer and uh, it's just too hot, that's right. It's just too hot. <laughs> anyway, they had a, a big trial happening and they're a couple blocks from the courthouse and in their county. And so there's a big trial in there that came in and it turns out that a reporter was in town and to, to cover this. And it was a multiple week trial. She booked a room based upon the reviews on their website and on Google and really was impressed with the reputation. Her reputation, her experience um, met that, you know, that high expectation that she got from the reviews. And 
her word of mouth uh, a couple days into it, she made a recommendation to a group of attorneys looking to stay. They want a little bit different experience than a typical Airbnb long-term rental. So anyway, our, prop, our client had uh, a number of cottages. And uh, so this a group of attorneys, Washington DC or wherever, booked them out. And it, it ended up being that, that one reporter that saw their reviews, uh, that saw their reviews and decided to book them. She then had a good experience and told them, but she made that decision based upon those reviews. And so, uh, so it turned into a $50,000 total uh, blessing to them based upon that one experience of someone choosing them for reviews. So, uh, so just to show you kind of the exponential growth and opportunity uh, uh, that can happen when, when you're doing that. There's also some other, you know, some obvious uh, benefits. So Glen Cove Inn is a, uh, Judy, yes, absolutely. You have to ask for reviews. We'll get it just to get into that. Yes, you have to ask. People will not, uh, you will not get the same uh, quality. Just think you know, about how many business, even when on shutdown, how many businesses you've interacted with in the last week to two weeks and how many of them have you left reviews for? Like you think, I mean, I think I do this for work and I think I'll go in the car and I'll sit in the car and I'll do a review before I leave the parking lot. It never happens. It never happens. But if somebody asks me, I will take time to do it. Yeah. If we're prompted, if we're prompted yeah. to, and I, so we try to be good about, it cause we know the impact and, uh, but yeah, it's, we, so yes, you have to ask cause you're otherwise going to just get a little trickle, um, otherwise, and it's not going to be, um, nearly as impactful. So this is just showing Glen Cove. They shot up in rankings on TripAdvisor. Uh, they'd shot up in, in rankings across the place over the course of a couple months, uh, just asking their uh, guests. And half this time they weren't even open. We just asked their past guests on a, on a, on a drip. So this allowed them to, uh, to, to grow and to, to, to grow in rankings on TripAdvisor. So it can really have that, that effect. So just to kind of walk, walk through, not to belabor the point, but the importance of this, um, this is how people think that advertising works. Um, they think it's pretty direct where you do some of these things in one column. You kind of pick what works for you and- Or you, you know, do all of these things. Or you do all column. of them yeah. and you kind of test it and people come to your business. This is how it actually works. Uh, and there's that intermediary step where people are searching, they're searching Google, they're finding, are you reputable? And in this world, you don't have to have, this is how it used to work. Um, there, there may have still been word of mouth, but now the impact of your past guest gets translated out into a lot of places. For lodging, that is directly on your property website. Um, they're looking at your reputation, they're looking on TripAdvisor, and they're looking on Google most other places they're not typically looking for you uh we've talked about some of this feedback and reviews it's not just about the marketing feedback is you get that feedback you get that review that's valuable but um there's a lot of unintended uh or kind of background things that are really valuable in grabbing uh reviews the first is that it helps you create an exceptional property uh you can learn and get feedback I stayed one time in a great place in Nashville um, and a little five room B&B, &B, great, uh, great place, uh, loved them. But man, I could hear everything. The door rattled as people walked up and down the stairs. I couldn't find a good plug uh, for my cell phone. Just little things that they hadn't realized that I would have never posted online and it would have been awkward to tell them in person. Uh, but for me, if they would have asked, I would have sent private feedback back to them and let them know about some of those little friction points that happened that they just didn't even realize. Um, the second thing is it helps you craft an exceptional story about your property. You can use all that feedback. Story. <laughs> I was like, that's me. I talk about that all the time. Good <laughs> that's, job. That's right. So it, it gives you what your customers are saying so you can focus on what is important to them in your marketing. So uh, here is an example from Glencoe. We had a wonderful experience last summer, best place we ever stayed at. The service was first rate. They're, they're telling us exactly what is important to them. And the service, it was quiet, it was clean. All the amenities were perfect. Breakfast was great. Breakfast there is not fancy, but they do a really good job with it. They appreciated the choices. We appreciated having coffee and cold water all day long. 
they're saying specifically, not everyone does, but they're saying specifically what's important. So now you can take that and build that back into other parts of your website and how you craft that. You're using your customer's words and what they care about back into it. And there's ways you can see broad picture, not just individuals where you can see uh, uh, that, you know, what are those common themes that are running through that. So uh, craft an exceptional story, increased in competition, people are looking for those trust factors. And then I just want to hover on this, it helps you limit the effect of a negative review. In a post-COVID world, if someone says, hey, they weren't wearing masks or, hey, they didn't, they, this was obviously not clean, that is going to be a big deal. That is a potential big uh, hurt for your business. If you're already grabbing reviews from folks that say, we had a wonderful experience. It was quiet. It was clean, uh, pleasant and comfortable. I think uh, I didn't pull it up, but Montford in two days ago, we had a great one that said, wow, they were so clean. They were so attentive. Things were changing uh, in their practices, but I'm going to pull it up here. I'm not going to do it justice. Made a fantastic stay. Made a few changes to accommodate the safety, none of which impacted us negatively. The food was excellent. We love to stay here and we'll return again. Uh, Room the, was immaculate. Immaculate. So if you if you get a negative person who's just freaked out about all of this stuff and it's going to happen, you've just sandwiched that between a bunch of people that are really thankful for, for your care and attention. Yeah. Um, That's what I was going to point out. We received the same top-notch hospitality with changes that have to be done in post-COVID world. Like that is an amazing review. So even if somebody comes on and there's always going to be a negative Nancy, you have all of these other great experiences helping to mitigate out any negative ones because they're going to happen. That's just, that's part of, that's just part of dealing with people. Yep. Part of doing business. <laughs> Absolutely. So there's a lot of benefits in a post COVID world, but we see that as it's always been important to, if you don't uh, take advantage of, of your reputation, then it's going to get hijacked at some point and mitigating that there's other ways like a good response and things like that, that you can do. Um, but this is, this is a really key. Um, aspect there. Anything else on the benefits? No. I don't. Okay. Yeah, you can go into that as you go, right? Yeah, great question, uh, Judy, on the public, uh, the private feedback. So, um, uh, as you asked, you must ask. It cannot be passive to get the full the full value. Um, now, what we do, and I'm going to come back to this, and I'm going to kind of show you visually. So, this is a, a process that we walk through. Um, we have a whole program that you can get into, but I'm going to kind of walk through as if you're trying to, to do it uh, yourself. And there's obviously benefits to just hooking into our whole service. But the, what we recommend is a, uh, basically a three-step process uh, that allows you to capture their, their feedback initially directly to you. And we do that through uh, NPS, that's Net Promoter Score. Um, if you're doing that yourself, you don't have to worry about that, but it basically gets the idea, it gets the tracks, how much people will, or what, what likelihood they are to refer you. That's what I'm looking for is that, well, how likely would you recommend our property to a friend? They do zero to 10. Then the next step, they come over and they give you that independent free feedback of whatever they want to say. How, how did you feel about your experience? And they tell you all about that. You get a lot of depth, you get a lot of detail. That is pretty, um, that's pretty awesome. And you don't get that if you just send them directly to Google. And then you, the third step is that you ask them to share that, that feedback. If it's on the positive end, share that on Google, share that on Facebook. Um, and that three-step process means that you can get the feedback you need that allows you to improve the property, that allows you to get the nuance that you can then um, use in multiple ways. Uh, people just aren't gonna share, like I said, those specific friction points because they don't wanna hurt the property. They may have had a couple of things that they did, you know, that they just were gonna gloss over, but they will tell you directly. Those are, that's valuable for you to hear. Or they may share in more detail um, 
you know, just about different things about their breakfast that, you know, like this person, uh, this was a direct review. You, this, this came directly to us uh, in this one uh, because these were TripAdvisor and then these were direct TripAdvisor Facebook. So you can see that there's a mix there, but a, a lot of uh, the detail um, often will come from, from uh, coming direct to you and you may still get it both direct and then ask them to, to post it on TripAdvisor. So all that to say is getting more first party reviews, they're coming to you instead of a third party would be a Google, a TripAdvisor and asking them. So you can implement this uh, in some ways yourself by asking, by sending out a feedback uh, form for people to fill out or just asking them to respond to your email after they check out. Those that come back really positive, you can say, wow, thank you so much for the feedback. Would you be willing to share, you know, to share that on TripAdvisor or share that on Google? Um, that really helps us. So it's the two, that step process, you'll get less third party reviews, you'll get a lot more value in that uh, first direct party. Plus it helps build relationship. If your best future guests are your past guests and you cared enough to ask them about their experience and give them the time and the space to be able to answer that question truthfully, they're going to have, you're going to have a better relationship built with them. So that when they think about coming back to the area, you're the first person they think of whether the stay was perfect or not, because you took the time to listen to them and craft a relationship with them. Hey, thanks for letting us know about that plug that's behind the bed. That is really awkward. We, we went ahead and we moved the bed in that room and put it in a surge protector so that there's more outlets. Thanks so much for your feedback for making us better. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like, wow, okay, they really value what I have to say. That makes me feel really good. Yes. <clears throat> Absolutely. So, so that's that process. And you can set this up by just playing, you know, if you're a smaller property, you can email people individually as they check out and just have a prompt, just like you would close out uh, their stay in your reservation engine or written or whatever that looks like. You're going to close that out. You're going to have this as a step in your process. You can also add it to the thank you email that goes out um, from your reservation engine. I know Think Reservations does this, ResNexus, um, they all do it in some, in some fashion. And then that can start the process to get that first party review. And then that, that's value because this is another asset rather than sending them, you know, just like your, um, your website can be an asset, your other, your getting great photos can be an asset, getting direct feedback from your customers is an asset in a lot of ways. And it also helps craft that exceptional story. Um, not all of you are wedding venues. We have a client who is a wedding venue. And when we ask for feedback, the brides write this, I mean, stuff that I couldn't say because I didn't get married there. Like I can see the pictures, I can hear about the experience, but these brides go in depth on the thing. And I, it just tells the story when we do wedding promotion for them, then I can just point them to the brides and their shared experiences. And that's going to craft an exceptional story better than and all I have to do is weave it together because what you want is you want somebody else who's had that amazing experience there to influence somebody else to have the amazing experience there. Mm -hmm. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're, we're coming up on time. We're really uh, pushing it. So I, I'm going to roll through kind of promoting your feedback and reviews. And this is something I've talked about a little bit, but um, a lot of folks, they let their, they just ask people for reviews on TripAdvisor. They let up those reviews sit there. Uh, maybe they get some on Google and they don't utilize that. So we talked already about utilizing that, making those improvements, using it to craft how, what things look like on your website and building that back in. Um, there's, there's a lot of ways to do that. Here's some really direct things that you can do. Um, you wanna use direct reviews on your website in multiple areas. So I'll use Glen Cove as an example here. First piece here is on, we'll talk about, they have a reviews tab that goes right. So first of all, on the homepage, you have to have um, your guest feedback, your reviews on um, from folks. We direct that to the reviews page so we don't have to put them all, but anything you can do to really show people that you are a awesome popular spot um, and, and do that with, uh, with great reviews. So it's gotta be on your homepage. In a lot of cases it, it is, 
Um, but I encourage you to, to make sure that it's there and those are the best reviews that you can show. The second place is uh, a reviews page and then having that in the menu. Uh, so there's a lot of key um, things to showing that though. Anyone can copy and paste, but you can add, a, add to the trust that you have by, um, by adding in a few key things, making sure you give the amount of stars that they gave, give their name and the date that they left that, and then the, the full detail of the review. Even if it's not all perfectly glowing obvious, people are gonna find out those warts and figure those out. They're gonna be on TripAdvisor. You might as well show them um, on your website. And there's some cases, you know, the really negative ones, you can leave those off because those are things you're gonna better deal with. But if they're so showing some warts, leave them on there. You know, someone who said, eh, I had this little thing, you know, but this other stuff was great. People wanna see um, the, the full picture. They're gonna find it anyway. Um, just keep them on your website and show it to them. So uh, yeah, so there's a lot of different uh, pieces to that, but making sure that you're pulling in those reviews, if that means you just have to copy and paste over to your site, absolutely do that. Uh, but there's, there's more sophisticated ways you can go. So having a page on your website. This is another thing that I think I rarely see, uh, and that is on specific pages um, mentioning guest feedback. So this is the amenities page that they have talking about their pet friendly, their breakfast, their ocean view walking trail. And then we've got reviews that back up that experience and quite a few of them too. So those are tagged based upon their feedback um, that they've given. And uh, we, um, it, it really helps to kind of back up what we're saying uh, to folks. So tagging, tagging them and making sure that if they mention, so think about you know, we just had a client that said, hey, one of my cottages always sells less. People are just always hesitant. So we went through and looked and some of the photos that they had taken and shared with us weren't the best. So we removed those. Uh, we looked at um, so how we describe things and looked at that. But we also looked for what are what people have mentioned, what people in the last couple of years wrote a review, gave us feedback and had mentioned that as a great place to stay. So we went back, found those, and pulled those over to the page and, and added those so people could give that extra, um, that extra social proof that this, this cottage is, is, a, is a good place uh, to stay. So, so that, there's a lot of different ways that you can use that, but those are hopefully some, some really valuable direct examples here. If you will uh, send this slide deck out, you can click on these and kind of get through, through those. So there's other ways you can share on social media, your recent reviews, that's a great way for, great thing for social media. We put them in the monthly newsletters and not yep. just the glowing reviews, we put in the most recent reviews. So again, yeah. warts They tend all. to be more positive. They're more positive. We're, we're fine with uh, showing warts, you know, as long as they're within the context of a great experience. Mm -hmm. So people value that, uh, that more transparent nature, I think. So, okay. Anything else you want to talk about? I think let's okay. move on to the next thing. Yeah, we're, we're rolling along on time. Okay, so we'll we'll keep this on the on the briefer end so we can kind of finish up. Appreciate everyone hanging with us. Uh, I want to talk about the lodging growth pyramid. Uh, there's we've shared a lot of information over the past couple of weeks and in the post, um, and there's a lot of value to that. And we hope it's been valuable to you and. Um, we're confident because this is what we do every day. We're confident that's going to make uh, an impact in your revenue, but really tying it together into one cohesive strategy, um, especially as you enter a bit of more normality in the coming months, I think is really, really key. You know, we're um, stage three was really about building for the long term, and um, and, and doing that. And so having a cohesive strategy where you're doing that. And so that is where it comes back to what we call the growth pyramid, where um, you're, you're thinking about this in a systematic way, because digital marketing is how you can really grow um, your, your property, really any business. The world is moving more towards digital, more towards online, um, all the more. And it's it's only intensified with the, the pandemic. Um, it's going to change how we shop and what we do. And it's going to, a lot of print related advertising and other things is, um, is really um, 
going to to suffer i think and it's going to push us further into into this so as you think of as you think of all these different ideas all these things you can do the best thing you can do is pull it together into a strategic plan to on how do i uh how do i grow and so as um as you work work through that um you know thinking about okay what each stage so the pyramid is made up of credibility um it's made of credibility that's the base level and at customer activity you're not going to get a lot of people it's not a build it and they will come kind of scenario in marketing but it's important to have that as you've reached into further stages you get into local reach you get into amplify awareness and brand authority and then domination and as you take those steps you can't do all this at once you don't have the the budget you don't have um mental bandwidth uh, the mental bandwidth is generally not but progressing through the stages and picking those things out is really really key so what you'll see here is the stages that we progress through typically long term um, and then the services that we provide that support it and that uh, those services are built to where you have to have a great website you have to have a great reviews and great feedback before you really progress i would say covid has changed us a couple of things to where um, doing the promo booster triangle, for instance, the email plus offer, that's really important. Um, and you're going to want to do that sooner, sooner than later because of the unique, um, uniquely where we find ourselves. But um, so this, uh, as you progress, having this plan of saying, hey, I can't do this all, but I, this is the full blueprint. This is the full thing that I know that I need to do. So um, so as, so one of the things I want to offer you guys is as you, um, as you go through this stuff and you process this information, if you want to get a no hard pitch, um, ask, you know, no hard pitch, um, conversation, book a call, we'll walk you through specifically your growth pyramid to say, okay, this is where your website is. This is good enough. Let's focus on something else or your reviews. Here's things you can improve and whatnot. But walking through specifically your growth pyramid, specific action that you can take, whether we work together or not, and then which services would be most beneficial to, to run into. So even if we don't end up working, you'd come away with value. You'd come away with that pyramid of, okay, here's the next steps that I know that I need to take. And we've been doing um, marketing since 2010, working with lodging since 2014, and we've got mountains of data to see exactly where bookings come from. Um, and I, I'm a nerd. I like getting into that stuff. And I've showed, walked you through before. Let's come in. You know, we've tracked a lot of a lot of great stuff and um, in understanding what is actually valuable. And we've built this out of that. So even if um, even if we don't end up working together in some way, finding um, exactly where you can focus your efforts both now and in the coming months and years um, should be very valuable. Because just like we said at the beginning, it's stage two and three of this, while it's about pandemic life, it's also about not pandemic life too. That's mm -hmm. the marketing strategies we use with clients all the time. We broke them down into specific stages of what the pandemic openings you know, what we're kind of looking at thinking it's going to look like, but those are good marketing practices all the time. And they all fit into that pyramid and they all build on each other to create a, a stronger um, marketing digital presence mm -hmm. to make sure that your in is, is telling, crafting that exceptional story to get the guests that um, is ideal for your property that are going to come again and again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so please book that call. There's no pressure. All we ask is that you're growth oriented, that you're um, looking to make changes, use that, use that information. We may find we work together, we may not, there's no hard pressure, but come away with that and we can walk you through not just some of these great tactical things, but how do you bring it into a strategy that helps you um, go from a trickle to a flow, to a flood of customers. And that is where a really sustainable business is built. And that's where we got the name Red Oak from. So we want deep roots, something that is sustainable through droughts and 
through floods, all of those things, it's a sustainable business. Growing that tree takes time and um, putting those roots down takes time, but it helps you to weather, uh, it can really help to weather uh, that storm. And uh, so, so as you think about that, um, so there's a lot of different providers out there. We focus really, um, we kind of take a page out of uh, independent lodgings book. You provide a higher end service typically. You're providing something that is hands-on because you know that that's the ultimate experience and it's rare in today's day and age to have a, a, just a really great personal experience. So we um, bring that to our work. So that means that, um, we price things according to the value that we can, can uh, bring out of them and the results that we can bring and that personal level of, of service. And that is what we believe kind of brings uh, success in that. So um, anyone have any questions? Anything, anything? I don't think so. All right, I wanna walk. So I'll talk you through in terms of return on investment. And this might feel like we're just pushing, okay, you know, uh, service is a little bit uh, more, but what I'm encouraging you to is more that think about that return on your investment of finding uh, a good partner, whoever that is, to, um, to take that next step and bring that cohesive strategy together. Not only that, but as an innkeeper, you're doing what you're really, really good at. You're caring for people mm -hmm. in a time and in a place when people aren't getting that care in other places. And so when it looks at, when they were looking at marketing in that whole pyramid, there's many pieces and parts of it that you absolutely can't do and, or absolutely can do, I'm sorry. And there's many parts of it that are, um, outside of your skill set or outside of your comfort zone. And you want to have a partner that you can trust. So we just want to show you what that can look like. Mm -hmm. And so thinking about the ROI, um, I know there's several smaller properties on here and, and folks, and there's different levels of what you've invested in, in marketing. So I just want to show some of our pricing for things. So you kind of get an idea and that will, um, and so I want to walk kind of you through some of that because a lot of folks look at pricing. So for us to run the promo booster triangle, typically around 650 a month. To, for us to run your whole of feedback and reviews, typically around 250 a month. There's different things there that depending on the size of the property, we can customize. But each thing is gonna have a pretty significant, a very significant impact on your direct bookings, both in the short term and in the long term. And so this is something that um, allows, will allow you to get, if you can get one booking um, a month out of one of these things, if you can have a, an awesome, functioning promo booster triangle where you have a great offer, you have a great email and you have great ads running all together. Um, you're going to, you're going to more than um, you're going to hit that, that return on that investment very, very quickly. Um, and so just to kind of, just want to kind of give you that, you know, so when you can do it in steps, even if you can't invest in the full package right away, doing that in steps, um, you can see a lot of, a lot of momentum and it can be, um, because it's all tied to those direct bookings, it can be a very valuable um, thing, even from the start and the ROI makes sense. So um, I just wanted to kind of show you a couple of things um, from clients. We just pulled these this morning. Um, and so, um, like I said, they're not refined um, <clears throat> like, a, like a super fancy case study would be, but just kind of, kind of walk you through, you know, what that, what that looks like. Because um, when you invest you know, when you do some of these things, they take time. You don't see, always see a perfect immediate um, benefit, but you have that further down, down, the, down the path and you're, you're growing that tree with those deep roots. So this is an example of, uh, we ran for uh, a client last year, holiday gift certificate special. We talked about that out there. There were a new client just had started, had relied on OTAs for years. Uh, for the majority of their business. Didn't really have an engaged customer list, even though they did a nice job once, when people are on the property, but they didn't really talk to people after. So we ran them through the holiday gift card um, um, thing and their gift certificate sales were um, in December of 2018 were $400. December of 2019 uh, was $5,400. So $5,000 that they wouldn't have seen otherwise came in December one of the slowest months of the year for them. Um, and uh, 
So that that small investment in the promo booster triangle yielded those those results that allowed them to have that cash flow that came through uh, further in the year. We have a smaller property that did about 12 grand in, in during the ho our holiday gifts card. And it only has, I think, they have eight or nine rooms or so. Um, but we've been working at it for time. You know, people know, um, we've, we talk regularly with their past guests and can, can pull that together. So um, here's another, what's that? That's the other one, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. This is uh, an example of uh, one where we've been running the last uh, month and a half uh, or so, I guess two months really, where we're asking for gift cards. So during COVID, when people supposedly don't have money, they're uh, bringing in a uh, couple thousand dollars. I don't have a total on this, but I think it's um, 13,500, 500, 700. This has been rolling in in gift certificates. Um, and uh, for this property. Here's another property. They have five rooms, thousand people on their email list, 800 people on their email list, not a huge audience. And this has been uh, directly tied to our efforts. Um, this is what's been coming through. Um, so almost $6,000 in this um, throughout, throughout the pandemic. So um, that, when you invest that, and I know that, you know, that that's a drop in the bucket compared to some of your, your needs happening, but this, this would never have come, come through otherwise. I showed you before, this is Google local management, some of those effects. One of the things I love is investing in Google optimization, because when you do that, you're putting those roots down. So this client, their business has dropped off hugely in this beginning of the year. We were trending even higher than last year. They were up about 30% uh, over the year before, we're trending even, um, continue to grow, and then COVID happened. That's catastrophic for them, but they've, and we've invested in having that organic visibility. So when things do come back, they're right up at the top. We'll be right there collecting um, direct bookings again. So investing that, putting those roots down, uh, can have a lot, of, a lot of value in bringing that, and for them, during that one month was about $16,000 in online bookings plus uh, 139 phone calls. We talked about uh, Glen Cove and some of their reputations overall. So just to, just to kind of give you, go ahead. Just, to, just Glen Cove specifically, this helped um, uh, increase where they're showing up, which automatically impacted their bookings mm -hmm. because they had more visibility. They're at the top of those lists. More people are booking with them auto automatically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so just to kind of give you an idea of if you can, um, whoever you choose to invest with and whoever, however you choose to do that, take time to build those assets and do those things that are going to continue to bring you value, especially focusing on those first two customer groups, uh, your past guests and those guests that are influenced by them, by your past guests. That's, um, online reviews uh, primarily. When you can invest in those things, even if you can just invest in one specific area um, and be able to track that um, impact, um, we, we just find time and time again when you make that investment. It's just like, um, it's just like a, good, a good rental property or something, you know, you make that investment, it comes back to you. So- And, make, um, and do um, be tracking it. Don't just hope that, mm -hmm. um, somebody out there knows the numbers be watching and mindful of what those numbers look like that's right so yeah this is the last time I'll, I'll talk about this and and we'll send this out in the email as well but book a call it's not going to be uh a hard pitch it's simply giving you that info and that strategy bringing things together cohesively so you know um okay this is my next step this is my next step. This is my next step. And you can keep plugging away no matter how you do that uh, here in the future. I'll end with this. This is more resources. You've seen this before. We've got the playbook. We've got our newsletter. We're going to start up a, a regular email. Um, we're, we're sharing a lot of um, things that we're learning and, and experiencing with our clients and sharing that. So looking out for our emails, we're going to be doing more webinars. Um, we just got to talk about a schedule for that. Um, I will have on-demand 
uh, webinar link I'm going to pull up right now. And I'll send this out in an email as well. So this will show up on this page. This is one page where we've got all of our education. So you can use it. It's got everything in one spot. The sessions, the outline, the slides, and then here is where you can view it. So, um, so hopefully you can use that as kind of a library, a resource um, ongoing. So uh, yeah, so uh, I think that's it. Uh, thank you for sticking with us. Hour and a half later, wow. Um, so <laughs> uh, we really know how to, how to get into it. So um, I appreciate you guys sticking with us. I hope that there's been some value. Um, if you have questions, um, we've kind of run through a lot of things. Um, and I know several of you have asked questions along the way, but um, if you have any questions, put those in the chat. We'll hang out here for a couple minutes. And um, as long as you have questions, we'll, we'll hang out and answer them for you. Um, and uh, yeah, anything else you wanted to kind of close with? I don't think so. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll reiterate my offer from last time. If you guys, um, have watched session two mm -hmm. and you went ahead and wrote that things to do article, which, um, is going to be a super critical piece of content on your website. I will happily, joyfully look it over for you and, um, make sure that content, um, both quality and quantitatively it is, um, really going to be beneficial to you. So I'm happy to do yeah. that. Um, you got any email that you get from us, you can hit reply to, and I'll see it, um, mm -hmm. to do that. So I'm happy to do that. I know, um, unless you are a person who likes to write, that is an intimidating, um, assignment that you have been given. So <laughs> I appreciate that. I am happy to help. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely, absolutely worth it. Um, and she's sincere. She'll, she'll help and <laughs> respond. And, um, we live and breathe this stuff. So, uh, we've always, always got more info. So, uh, Judy's asking, so we can hire you for just one promotion. We can, we could talk specifically what you're thinking. Typically we do things on a monthly basis. So we don't do contracts and we try to, rather than price up front, even if we have a lot of upfront work, we try to price things on a monthly basis because it's always better uh, it's a win-win if we can work together long term so typically just one promotion we would we would uh, typically do that but um, we could talk more just shoot me um, a message and we could talk more um, on that but all that to say is like I said we don't have contracts and and so there's people can can jump on and off um, and so that we can change out like, Hey, we've been doing this thing for three months. Mm -hmm. We are aware, we know what your budget is. Now it's time to switch to this other thing. That's why we keep it as a month to month so that we can hit those different parts of the pyramid as we go along and work with you. We want to be mm -hmm. um, an asset to you along the way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah. We, we've seen pretty common, uh, huge upfront costs happening. Um, for local huge businesses monthly costs. and they're generally worth it, but it can be hard to swallow a five, 10, $15,000 website. And they generally do pay off if they're done well. But if we can make that um, easier so that the profits you get from our work can fund, um, fund that cost, we find that's a, a better long-term opportunity. Um, it's better win-win. So uh, that's a great compliment, Steve. Thank you. Um, he said to take the time to do the call that he offered. He gave a couple of great ideas that I could implement pretty easily. That's really a great company. I Steve. wasn't on the call. Matt did a great job. <laughs> I know he did. <laughs> so. Thank you, Steve. And I know I didn't, we didn't have the, the pyramid kind of fully uh, developed out uh, when I talked to you a couple of weeks ago. And so I'm happy to, uh, to, to do that, to kind of give you some specific air, bigger areas. I know we talked about some quick action items um, there. So um, yeah. So it was not sales pitchy either. Good, good. <laughs> I, I strive for that. I want, yeah, absolutely. Good. Okay. Um, but yeah, Judy, to come back to you is it's easy on and off and we can, um, yeah, let's, let's, let's talk more and see how I can, can help. I know you sent me a question before about a staycation. We talked about that. So um, yeah, there's lots of 
exciting opportunities. So yeah, I just encourage you guys towards action and um, but action with a plan because um, you can see, you can track what, how it's going and you can make those adjustments as you go. So mm-hmm. thanks everyone for hanging on with us. Uh, we really thanks appreciate lot, it. And like I said, we've got these resources and we're going to be putting more out. So stay on the email list. That's the, the main source that we're going to be sharing that through and excited to, to continue to, to help and help you grow through COVID. So, <laughs> all right, everyone have a great Thursday and uh, we look forward to talking.